makes a good report. Now, all of us here know that a good report is probably one of the one of the first communication interfaces between you and the reviewer, and therefore we want to make it good. Now, there are some areas I really want to share with you after reading a number of reports over the past few weeks. Now, I need to clarify this. These are my own opinions only. It doesn't represent any of the official opinions or directions, so to say, um, in order to, to come up with a good report. These are my own opinions only. You may disagree with me or you may agree with me, but that is a platform exactly that we can share views. Now, there are a few points I want to point out. First point, first point is an overview, overview. Now, we all know in all reports, there will be an introductory section. There will be an overview for the whole project. How to do that overview is another thing. Now, some of you may try to lay down all the, all the general details, all the general details, all the details of your project. Now, some of you may dive right into a certain points that you want to highlight. My take here is at least, at least give us a general idea of what your project is doing. And at least highlight those areas which you are responsible for. As simple as showing a map. So a lot of you, of course, you will show a map in your overviewing section or the introductory section. But the problem is sometimes the prints are in there. They are so small that I don't even know where to focus where to focus on. So it is a good idea to, to do some overlay. So don't be lazy. Do some overlay. Do some big labels on that map. Say you pick a certain map from Google Map, for example. You circle the area of your site and highlight those specific elements in your site as an overview. And that helps a lot. That helps a lot. Guess what? Now, probably of the, many, of the, many of the candidates out there, they will be very familiar with their own projects. But for us, the reviewers, most of us are part-time reviewers. We are not doing that. We are do, not doing that full-time. And therefore, we don't have enough time. Most of the time, we don't have much time. Uh, I'm not saying we try to rush things through. But I'm saying we have a tendency to, to, to spend time efficiently, to grasp most of the concepts or most of the ideas that you are trying to convey to us within the shortest period of time. Otherwise, otherwise we will run ourselves into troubles. We, we have a number of reports to read. Uh, a number of us probably will read that on the plane if we need to fly. And therefore, it is a good idea to give a good overview of your project, of your responsibility. Just a few weeks ago, when I read through a report, well, that candidate put in a, a, a Google map. But that Google map is so detailed with a lot of small prints in there. And I was struggling, oh, where are you trying to point me to? So where is your site? And then I need to read those small blue prints in there in order to, to identify, ah, oh, that is your site. Now that candidate actually put in some, some, some labels in there, but that, that was not that clear. So if that map alone can be done well, that can give us a very good impression to start with. Secondly, second point is we, we talked about it. Uh, we know it, but it's easier said than done. So what is this? Demonstrate the attributes. We all understand there are seven attributes in, uh, in, in ICE, professional review, I should say. In other institutes, there are different, different number of attributes, but it is important for you to demonstrate your attributes in your report. Now, you can't miss any one of them. Uh, many of you will ask, are there, are, are, are there are different weightings? Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about different weightings of different attributes. Potentially, you, you should demonstrate all attributes. You can't miss any one of them. Now, different, different reviewers, they may have different styles. Uh, they, they will say, uh, that one is more important, that one is more important. Officially speaking, all of them are, are important. You need to demonstrate all of them, but make sure you do not miss any one of them. Some of you may try to label a certain paragraph or a certain, a certain phrase and try to tell the reviewer what sort of attributes you are trying to demonstrate. Now, that is okay. That is not mandatory, but personally, I like it. Why? Because you're, you're pointing me to a certain areas which, which save me time, which I can, I can uh, have a look and see 
and make a judgment on whether you demonstrate that attribute sufficiently. That is one idea. Another idea is look for problems. Now, I'm not talking about problems in your reports. I'm, not, I'm talking about problems or challenges in your project. Wherever there are problems, there are solutions is a very famous saying. So whenever you identify any problems or challenges, these are the opportunities for you to demonstrate your attributes. Discuss that problem. Discuss your idea. Discuss your solution. So these are some of the common techniques that you can demonstrate your attributes. So instead of saying, now I am going to demonstrate the attribute of management and leadership and then R. A whole paragraph down there. The other way is you present a problem and then through that problem you demonstrate to the reviewer that ah, these are the attributes that you are going to demonstrate. Sometimes the attributes may overlap. So a certain problem may demonstrate your communication skills, may demonstrate your leadership skills, may demonstrate your, your commercial abilities. I still remember one of the reports. Uh, it's very good. Um, um, that candidate talked about talked about labor shortage during COVID. Labor shortage during COVID, we all knew about us. And uh, we had a good discussion during the interview on um, whether this is a compensation event, how, how, do, how do you deal with the payment, how do you deal with it contractually, how do you manage the risk, etc. And throughout the discussion, the candidate just, just, just shine, just, just, just shone with flying colors on, on how that candidate could demonstrate how she managed the matters on site. And that is how we demonstrate, how we demonstrate attributes and how you, you, you prompt the reviewers to look into certain attributes in your report. The third thing here is do not, now let me repeat, do not, do not use question probers. Don't use question probers. So what are question probers? Question probers are something very very common very very i was i would i should say very 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 infamous out there whereby the candidates try to hide something in the report hoping the reviewer the reviewers will ask some of the questions in that area and in that sense they will prepare some of the some of the answer beforehand and then they would say ah okay i got you reviewer so you ask the question i want you to ask and therefore i can just recite all the all the, all the answers and i will just vomit the whole answers in front of you now that doesn't work why because we the reviewers are quite trained to search for question problems and we know you are using it and uh, don't 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 do it don't do it some of the reviewers do not like it the more question probers you use, the less questions that you want them to, to ask, they will ask it. No. So the more question probers you use, the less likely they will ask the questions you want them to ask. So that is another area that I want to share with you. I personally don't like question probers because I want, I want to uh, uh, see whether that candidate is good in communication in the first place. And uh, if you work with a certain colleague, they hide something behind you and you know about this, you probably won't, won't want that colleague to work with you either. So it's like a clubhouse. If you want to enter into a certain institute, professional one, it's like entering a certain clubhouse. So whether other club members will accept you as a candidate, it depends really much more than the technical knowledge that you are having. It's the over, o overview of your overall, overall attributes that you are demonstrating. So that is another area that I want to share with you. Um, we are organizing some of your no, we are organizing some of the events in London. Uh, it's coming up in February. Uh, we are closing registration. So I must thank for your support. We are closing registration. I may put up a certain QR code on the screen later on. If that cannot be done, I will do that. I will do that in the comment section. But we will surely, we will surely do that again and again and again. Now that course, that training day is charged. Now the main reason is nowadays the venue, the venue they are quite expensive, and I need to pay another tutor to do the job. Uh, it's not just me. It's just just me it's not just me speaking about the topic I, I need to pay some other tutors too so so that is why we charge um some of you may say oh it's very expensive now think about this think about this you may as well save a lot 
if you get it flu, get get things flu the first time when you come to London. So, so I hope you're all the best. Uh, I'll try to modify my style. I'll try to come up with certain more to uh, other topics concerning these interviews because I know many of you are very concerned, very nervous. I will see many of you later on in person in London very soon. Thank you very much.